just got crap. He's really not getting much oxygen around his body. Hi, yeah. baby. It's OK. We really have to act quickly. A hit-run victim has just arrived at the clinic. In a bad way. Yeah, she's probably, really, probably really serious head trauma. It's just incredible that someone could run over a little dog like this and not even stop. Joseph and Judy are in damage control. Their 11-year-old daughter, Rose, has fallen on their puppy. Oh, she kept on saying it's an accident. It's, it's an accident. This week on Bondi Vet. Hey, hey, hey. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's it's touch and go. She's, she's in a bad way. She's probably really, yeah, probably really serious head trauma. A hit-run victim has just arrived at the clinic. Her circulation, it's, it's deteriorating. So we've just got to stabilise that, get the best out of it we can. OK, so we've got the catheter in there. It's going to allow the drugs to get in there a lot more quickly. Come on, buddy. Come on, mate. Come on. OK, so you've seen him on the road? Yes, and the others were just standing there. Dawn Hardy and her daughter Fiona rescued the road accident victim. Someone actually ran over its whole head and then just kept driving. And just left it there. And they just said, it doesn't matter because it's just going to die. And I went, you can't say that. Now, has he got worse since you've been with him? No, he just wants to bite me. Just wants to bite you. It's the thanks you get, isn't it? <laughs> You've done the right thing in bringing him in, though, so thank you. You might have saved his life. It's just incredible that someone could run over a little dog like this and not even stop. <laughs> Chris administers morphine to control the pain and large doses of cortisone to limit the swelling on the brain. He's just going to, I guess, trust us right now to know that we're trying to do the best we can for him. That bruising, that area there should be white. He's got an enormous amount of trauma to his skull, and it's amazing he's actually alive. He's a walking miracle, or a lying one right now. And that, that blackness there could even be rubber off a car tyre, so... And it looks like most of the impact's gone through his, his skull there, but the wheels managed to find a way to hit there as well. With the dog's life hanging in the balance, Chris hasn't had a chance to check the sex. Turns out it's a little girl. See that stiffness and that rigidity? It's a really upper motor neuron, so, and that could be skull trauma, it could be high level spinal injuries up here. It may just be all shock, and just as a result of the, the head trauma, which would be great. Can we just get that scanner in here, Neil? Neil scans for a microchip, which contains details for the terrier's owner. At last, some yeah, good news. Much. Bye now. Uh, the dog's registered, but they're not able to contact the owners yet, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. She has stabilised, but really, the next few hours are critical. It's OK, mate. You can in there. Can you just keep on going? Let's go have a look here and see if there's a, a response to the light here. There's a slight response there, not a huge one though. The fact there is a response there, I guess, is a, is a positive, but there's a lot, lot more negatives than there are positives right now. How are you going? Stephen, is it? How are you going? I'm Chris. Hey, Chris. Owner Steve Duggan you? has finally been found. A bad little bit of timing, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Alright, do you want to come through and we'll have a look at we'll have a look at Jackie for you? Oh Jackie. Um, she had a, a massive impact on that on that car, and mm. I mean the fact she's even here is, is a minor miracle in itself. But she's smelling you now. Hello, Jackie. Jackie. The way she responded to Steve's smell, I thought was just amazing. She was using every last bit of energy to get up and see him and, ju and just be close to him. And then Steve tells me she's just 14 months old. Jackie's his best buddy. And that's cruel. I got her as a companion, because I'll be by myself. I wanted a dog to uh, have a bit of company. I know, Jax. I know. Oh, you're always so excited to see me, aren't you, Jackie, eh? Unconditional love. Police are now investigating Jackie's hit run. Steve's friend had taken the terrier for a walk and tied her up outside a local hotel for just a few minutes. Security camera vision shows a stranger untying the terrier and stealing her lead. Why do you steal a three dollar leash? It's just criminal. I know, Jax. 
Thank you. Obviously, she can't be anything like she was before. Mm. But I'm just worried about her quality of life. I'd love to be able to just give Steve some sort of reassurance that everything's going to be okay, but it's it's just not really possible right now. Stay there, Jackie. You guys never sleepy. As Steve says goodbye to Jackie, he knows his best friend needs a miracle. Back at Bondi, Jackie has stabilised enough for Chris to carry out some crucial x-rays. Three, one, two, three. So Jackie's improving. She's somehow beaten the head trauma, the concussion, and now she's doing her best to convince me that she can beat this whole thing. But there's one final test, and that's the x-rays. We've got to work out what's going on with that spine. X-ray. I think the thing I find most touching about Jackie at the moment is the fact that she, she can't see. The only comfort she's got is that she can smell things and you go near and she has a sniff of you and she has a little lick of you as if to say, you know, are you helping me now? It's not looking good. That's a really serious spinal fracture there. So she's got a Severed spinal cord. As if she hasn't been through enough already. Exactly. I mean, she's tough, but she's not that tough. Mm, she's fought so hard as well. Yeah, it's I mean, very it's fair. Just, you can't work miracles. It's not fair. <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. I'm sorry, you're a little fighter, though, aren't you? Huh? You want to hang on? You really do. I guess what's infuriating in this situation is that she was just doing what she felt natural. She was let off the leash by, by some idiot who decided to take matters into his own hands. Who knows why? And she's the victim of some person's stupidity and thoughtlessness. And, you know, he doesn't have to see this. He doesn't have to deal with the sight we see here with this little girl in trouble. And, and it's just, it's senseless. It never gets any easier. In fact, it sometimes gets harder, particularly as you get to know the animal and the people involved. Um, we know with the animal that we would never let them suffer, um, but it's really hard for the people. That's, that's what breaks your heart, it breaks my heart. Jackie's owner, Steve, decides to put his best friend out of her pain. Please, just relax. Wendy has rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash with her critically ill cat. Okay, what's happening? He's, he's blood's like a grey, black, and he's lost all his Okay, heart. I'm going to take him straight oxygen. out the back and give him oxygen. You just stay out here and... I'm, no, I'm going to take him out and I'll come and talk to you when he's stable. I'm just going to mask this cat. He looks like crap. Serena, can you just get a m oxygen mask? Okay. Now, this cat is blue. Um, he's really not getting much oxygen around his body. Emergency vet Lisa Chimes is almost certain the cat has swallowed human medication. I think he's had paracetamol toxicity. His gums, his lips are all swollen. Yeah. Paracetamol causes damage to the red blood cells so that they can't carry oxygen around the body. And when you can't carry oxygen around the body, you can't get oxygen to the, the brain and you die. In a cruel irony, the cat's name is Lucky. There is an antidote for paracetamol poisoning, but its effectiveness depends on how long the toxin has been in Lucky's system. Paracetamol can kill a cat within four hours, so we really have to act quickly. Oh, baby, it's okay. okay. Stop it. At Sash, Lisa's under huge pressure to stabilise Lucky, but the terrified cat is fighting her health. It's alright, sweetie, calm down. Lucky has paracetamol poisoning and is just hanging on. No, come on. 
It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. We can't give you an antidote if, if you keep moving. Come on. Okay, just get that oxygen mask on. We're stabilising him at the moment and he looks pretty bad, but I have seen cats that, that are this bad get better, so we're doing our best to pull him through this. Lisa needs to ask the owner, Wendy, for permission to give Lucky the antidote. We're not going to see the results straight away. How long and, does it take? Um, I mean, he could take several days to get better, <laughs> and, and I can't guarantee you that he's going to recover from this. Let's do but it but it's still, he still might not get better, okay? We, we're going to give him his best shot and do absolutely everything we can, but I, I can't ha promise you anything, okay? Lucky's like been with us since he was two or three weeks old. He's like our own little baby, really. You know, he's, we syringe fed him, got the photo. He's just like one of the family, our little baby. I had no idea that paracetamol could do that sort of thing, you know, but I know he certainly didn't get it from us. What's happening? It's just really shallow breathing. And it, it did stop for a little bit. At Sash, Lisa is about to give Lucky an antidote for his lethal dose of paracetamol poisoning. OK, can we get the crash cart? Lucky's just crashed and it's happened before we've even had a chance to give him the antidote. Is there a laryngoscope anywhere? Yeah, he's just arrested. The toxin has shut down Lucky's system. His heart has stopped beating and he can no longer breathe on his own. We're giving the antidote while we're doing CPR. His chances aren't very good, but we've got to give everything we've got to get him home to Wendy. Sophia, do you want to stop for one second so I can see if we've got a... Oh, there's some P waves. OK. <sighs> what are my chances? I'm unlucky. He's called Lucky. Oh, lucky. Never call a cat Lucky. I'm Never call a cat Lucky. lucky. But be lucky, OK? Lisa is administering more atropine and adrenaline in a last desperate attempt to save Lucky. Oh. Oh, come on. She loves him so much. Unfortunately, Lucky hasn't made it and we did absolutely everything we could to try and get him through this and it, the toxin had just taken effect and, and it's too late. Wendy is convinced someone deliberately gave Lucky the paracetamol. You're pretty angry now. You know, I'm very angry that people are that wicked out there that they can kill little animals. They're so helpless, you know. And he was so loving. It's like losing one of your children, you know? It's just heartbreaking. It is extremely important that people realise how toxic paracetamol is to animals, especially cats. And we've just seen Lucky lose his life because of paracetamol and people just need to be aware of how deadly it is. Joseph and Judy are in damage control after a freak accident at home. Their 11-year-old daughter Rose has fallen on their puppy and appears to have broken his leg. She was very upset, really teary and just basically devastated. And she kept on saying to me, it's an accident, it's, it's an accident. Oh, little man. Oh. Without even putting much pressure on that, I can feel some crunching there. Mm. So he's got a big fracture. I think that's broken in half. Adorable. Think of little lamb. He's so tiny. Emergency vet Lisa Chimes will now take x-rays. But she's almost certain they'll confirm Pip has suffered a shocking fracture. He's in a good place, sweetie. Do not worry. Consumed with guilt, Judy's daughter Rose is calling to he's find fine. out just how badly home, she's hurt I'll talk her to puppy. About it and I'll let you know exactly what they're going to be doing to him. You just say a prayer for Pip. He'll be fine. Wow. That is a serious break. 
Unfortunately, the X-ray results are going to make Rose feel even worse. The two fragments of bone are just sitting at right angles to each other where they should be straight. So the only way that's going to get better is with surgery. Pip is a 13 week old puppy. He's full of life normally and this life has been snapped out of him with this break. It's just awful. Here's the little boy. Look after him. I will. Oh, he's so tiny. Hi, baby. At SASH, it's now time for surgery to try to save 13 week old Pip's shattered leg. And there's a sleep. The toy poodle's femur was snapped in half after his 11-year-old owner, Rose, accidentally fell on him. Pip's got a, quite a nasty fracture of his thigh bone, um, and it's just cracked straight in two, so we're going to put a plate and some screws in there to get it together and get it stable. Surgery on the tiny puppy will need to be precise and quick. With a little bloke like this, we don't want him on the table for too long, because even with all the heating that we provide, they can get really cold and we can have all sorts of anaesthetic complications if they do that, so we've just got to be in and out. Pip's bones are just so small, I mean, they'd be six millimetres wide and I'm trying to get a two millimetre screw into the bone, so there's not a lot of room for error. Because Pip's only 13 weeks old, he's still growing and as a result I'm going to have to compromise a little bit on how many screws I can put in the bone because if I put too many in I'll go across one of his growth plates and that'll stunt his growth. How about that? You're going to go home soon. This is one day after surgery and he's walking. The leg is fixed. Pip has made an amazing recovery after his leg was snapped in half. After just 24 hours, the toy poodle can now go home with his family. Your family's excited to see you. Yes, they are. Yeah. Mommy's yeah. coming. He's coming. It was 11-year-old Rose who fell on her puppy. I love you. After blaming herself, seeing Pip again is a huge relief. We've got to be very gentle when you hold him. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Rose missed Pip so much and when I brought him into the room, the look on her face just priceless. And I know she is just going to look after him from now on. This isn't the normal Marie. I know. Yeah. Not for it. Chris's torrid day is not over yet. That evening, another call out. She ate the, like, but the entire the, bottom this of it, which bottom is about... Bit a metre and a half long. Okay. Worried cousins Genevieve and Hilary are almost certain their Pomeranian Marie has swallowed some bikini string. The fact she's got a back arched says that she's, she's certainly sore there. Mm. Well, she's letting me feel all of it apart from one area. You hear that sound? Oh. The two 19-year-olds arrived home to find their six-month-old puppy vomiting. I didn't hear a peep out of her and I actually thought someone took her because it was that quiet. Hilary and Genevieve are two of our most colourful, interesting clients. What's that? That's, this is like, you know when you're friend. a baby and you have a blanket and you like grow up and you take it with you, that's what Marie does with her hat. You have to understand they not only love this dog, they live their lives through Marie. And I just said to her, Marie, I don't, don't think you're old enough yet to handle a mobile phone. So Twitter's out of the question. <laughs> she has her own <laughs> sombrero, um, which can be seen on her Facebook page. She has 81 friends at the moment, including Chris. It's just hard to actually keep it quite a serious mind. You do actually have to keep a focus and realise that you've got a sick dog here. Chris is hoping x-rays will help him confirm if the swimwear string is causing a blockage. It's like a, a, a drawstring, it pulls tight and actually locks that intestine up into a loop and if that's the case, that intestine can actually die, die off and that can be really serious really quickly. X-ray. Chris is hoping x-rays will confirm whether or not six-month-old Marie has swallowed a large section of bikini string. 
The unfortunate thing about a swimming costume is that it doesn't show up in x-rays, it's not like bone, but the characteristic signs of blockage or an internal problem are a gas buildup and also an intestine that is all tightly coiled up, you know, it's, it's basically uncomfortable and it's inflamed. Do you want to come through and yes. have a look at my rate? I'll show the x-rays as well. The problem I face is that I know how much Marie means to them and they're going to be looking for an answer right now. The other problem I have is that I don't have one. But what happens if you choose to operate and then it's not in there? Exactly. This dog's essentially my baby. Um, Hilary bought her for me. <laughs> in, um, all, in all seriousness, Genevieve's brother died about six months ago. Obviously she was beside herself and we just moved out together. I mean, we don't do anything without Marie. The other day we went and saw a psychic and Marie came with us. <laughs> and um, he's been to the museum, yeah, the art gallery. She saw Spider-Man. She's pretty much one of us. I have a laugh with the girls about the way they treat Marie. But when you know what they've been through, it makes you understand why that little dog is so important to them. Marie will have to stay in the clinic overnight and the girls have decided she needs VIP treatment. Are we like able to bring stuff? What do you mean by a few things? Just got a shoe and just, just got a bed. And her book, she might like, she might have like a picture of us. Take her message here is a few things. Okay. I'll see you soon. A few things, you reckon? We'll see. The cousins have arrived back at the Bondi Clinic with their own special care package for their sick puppy, Marie. All right, let's go and find a place for it all. Okay, correct. Um, am I meant to be reading that to her tonight, or? If you could, we're just, just a picture. I, I've marked the page where we're up to. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Where's she going? Hilary and Genevieve believe the six-month-old puppy has eaten some bikini string. It appears to have caused a serious blockage. Is she going to say, how Mary? No, we'll leave the religion for the camera. <laughs> Good night, Squish. So if anything happens during the night, if there's any change, I'll let you know. But if she remains stable, we'll talk in the morning and then decide whether she goes to surgery. If nothing's changed, she probably will go to surgery first thing. Hello, Miss. So she was a graduate of puppy school? Yeah, she did really well. Really? Yeah. Uh, you, you'll understand why I'm Questioning that. Oh, she's not happy. She must be sore or something. Yeah, no, I think she is. The next morning, Chris and head vet nurse Neil are confronted with a very cranky, sore Marie. The Pomeranian's condition has deteriorated overnight. More x-rays are taken, but they're still inconclusive. This is the big issue. We cannot be sure that that cord is actually inside Marie. Yet Marie looks worse, so what do you do? I know the concept of a surgery probably doesn't appeal to you too much. It's a bit daunting. Yeah, but the concept of... I'd rather her like go in and be overdone within an hour than be in pain for three days. Yes, exactly. That's my thinking. Marie, did we bring you some flowers? Look! As you would if anyone was sick, you'd come bearing gifts, so we bought red flowers, um, the tulips, which are Marie's favourite, and the get well balloon, which hopefully she won't chew and ingest. My only worry is the girls don't truly realise just how serious this surgery is. The big unknown is what we see when we get in there. Is there a cord? Is there not? And if there is a cord, what sort of damage has it done? Is it causing a, basically the, the intestine to die off? If that's the case, we've got a big surgery. Yeah, nothing yet. Chris has been forced to open up Marie to find out whether a piece of swimwear cord is causing a dangerous blockage. Huh. All right. So there's a little bit of swimsuit actually inside her cecum. Now, if it's been sitting there and, and essentially fermenting and causing irritation, then that may explain why she's been sick. It's almost like appendicitis for a dog. It's proof at last that Marie did make a meal of that bikini but there is some good news. The thing is where it caused the problem is actually pretty close to home. It's only got to go down the rest of the colon and then it's out. 
So rather than making a cut and actually potentially causing an infection, I'm actually going to milk it through, through the colon so it only has maybe a few centimetres to travel and actually then leave the body. No running, please. With the bikini string almost out, it's now up to Marie to finish the job herself. The wait begins. <laughs> Two days later, the bikini munching Marie finally answers the call of nature. A nice little present. Look for it. The answer could be in the bag. Chris has only found a small portion of the swimwear cord that went missing. Just the thickness and the fact it's got that elastic there. It's swimming costume, without a doubt. Where the rest is remains a mystery. Later, Chris carries out a special house call. Oh my god, I'm so itchy! Yeah, just <laughs> gently, gently, gently. Hilary and Genevieve have bought Marie a new bed for the big occasion. Just Seriously though, you do have to keep it quiet because she will pop those stitches out if, if she keeps on running around. She does that a lot. All right, I'll, um, I'll see you later. Thank you so, Thanks much, so much, Chris. We really appreciate it. And Marie does as well. We'll, um, we'll definitely be sending um, updates. Yeah, I know. I'll Thank miss you. you all. Thank you, Chris. And we'll see you nice. soon. See you, Marie. Bye-bye. Bye. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.